Hello YouTube, this is the second video showing how I built the tailgate light system for my dump truck. There is a lot of fabrication techniques including using the lathe, mill, welding, cutting and making the remainder parts for the light system. I hope you enjoy this video. The middle bar, I originally thought to use two of these and two stabilizers in the middle. However, I'm going to use only three. So I decided to strengthen this one and add zert fitting. And I also going to build three end caps and I put them at the end of the rods. Uh, after I build them, I'll show you where these gonna go. I'm going to square these on the lathe. I'm also going to cut the three washers over here. This is a quarter inch thick. And I will weld them on top of this. And then I'll drill in the center and put their fitting. It is safer to not wear gloves around rotating equipment. Wearing gloves, jewelry, long hair, music clothing, or long sleeve shirt can increase the chance of the operator being pulled into the rotating machine, resulting in severe injury or death. I'm very careful around operating rotating machinery, and I highly suggest for you to be safe and any work you do, do it at your own risk and follow the highest standard in safety. I'm going to cut the end caps for this out of this bracket. I grind it one side, it's easier to grind it when it's in one piece. The hole saw that I have that could cut the end cap for this, it has a few missing teeth. 
hopefully it will work and it will do the job I'm going to remove the pilot bit because I don't want to uh, drill the hole in the center with this size I need it to be smaller so I'm just gonna try to cut it on the mill using this hole saw and then I'll drill it in the center on the lathe
the main or middle shaft support brackets going to be below the bed support channels. I made sure the brackets positioned to the top and I gusseted the bottom corner of each bracket. I always like to round or cut 45 at the end of any exposed corner to make it safer in case someone hit their body with it so it doesn't hurt as bad. I originally thought to use four of these, two with the grease fitting and two without. However, I changed my idea. I'm only going to use these three. You will see how I'm going to set them up here in a little bit. These in cabs I'm going to install them on these stabilizers. I'm going to weld them like this. And this will grease this part over here so the rod will always or the shaft will always be free and this area will not rust or wear out. The three brackets, I'm going to install them over here. I will put the shaft inside them and the activator, the one that's going to go inside. You will see the end result and it will make sense to you. I will cut the shaft and get everything set up. I will weld this and I will set this up off camera, you know, uh, to save some time because the weather is bad. I try to get done before it starts raining again. The plan for today, I need to finish uh, welding the end caps and those three brackets and then I need to pull this tree out and cut it it died from the snowstorm I put the end caps I'm getting this ready I'm gonna install them as low as possible. I already uh, put shim over there to make sure I have enough space between the shaft and the C channel. This over here, it's going to link to the front of the truck. Once I build the linkages, all this will make sense then. I just have to weld it, make sure everything's square. I only squared the center one. I will tack it in place. The shaft is free. And then I will do the sides. I welded all the three in caps. I will lower the bed and I'll show you what I did in the back of the bed. The shaft free, even when I raise the bed 
to a quarter way, halfway, three quarter of the way, it doesn't get in a bind. I put a grease on the joints. I'm going to take measurement for the linkages. And then I'll put everything together. And this linkage will go all the way to the front. I took very accurate measurement from center hole to center hole need to be 15 and 3 quarters of inch. I'm going to cut pieces out of this old thread to get the length of these linkages that I'm looking for which is 15 and 3 quarter of inch. This old thread is a 3 feet in length. I have enough to finish this job to make the two pieces for these two linkages and also to weld at the end of the solid round stock. They connect the yoke to the solid stock so I could adjust it at both ends.
the flat stock is half inch and the old thread is 5 8 of inch that's why I grinded the old thread flat so when I weld it it will be centered in the flat stock I cut them in this shape so when I weld them to the solid round stock I could fill it with weld all the way and the weld will be strong. This is extra piece of the old thread, I'm not gonna use it, I already cut what I need for this project. I just showed you how I clean the end of the thread after I cut it. I always try to hold the grinder at the same angle as the thread itself or the pitch of the thread. This way it will thread very easy in the knot. You could use a grinder or file to do this job. The measurement for this connecting rod, it need to be 148 inches from center hole to center hole. As you see, I threaded enough old thread in the yoke at both ends to give me enough adjustment and I'm going to cut the solid round stock to length to achieve the 148 inches from center hole to center hole.
I painted all the connecting rods with the primer after I cleaned them with acetone and as you see they came out nice. I need four clevis pins, something similar to this, to go over here. I couldn't find 5 8 of inch diameter pins this length, so I'm going to make my own out of these bolts. I'm going to clean these. These are metric bolts, they're about 10 thousandths of inch, bigger than the hole over here. So I'm going to machine them down, clean the rust on the head, may machine the head down a little bit and then use washers on the outside, take measurement, drill a hole, cut it to length, and chamfer the end of it to look something similar to this one. I'll chamfer the head so it will fit easy into the hole and line up this one to the other parts that are gonna go here. I have four of them made. I ended up around them on the grinder. I couldn't get a good uh, position on the lathe. And they perfect fit. What I'm going to do now I'm going to use washer on the outside over here and one over here take measurement and a drill over here for cutter pin. I'm also going to chuck these washers on the lathe and machine them down so they be the same size as this uh, yoke over here. This washer is a little bit bigger. I drill this washers because the 5.8 washer usually had to play on the bolt or on the pin. I drill these with 5.8 drill bit so they fit perfectly.
I'm going to make two of these locking pin and I'm going to mount them under the tailgate and the lock mechanism will engage them like this or actually it's going to be like this because this will be welded under the tailgate I drilled and cut this flat stock the flat stock is not perfectly square and the hole not perfectly drilled in the center of these I'm planning to square all four of these brackets so when I weld the pins on both sides they will be perfectly level or aligned to each other the way I'm going to do it I cut this shaft it's inch and a quarter same diameter as the hole and I made it little bit less than two inches these combined they will measure two inches because they half inch flat stock now all the holes aligned and I could chuck this on the mill and then I use this cutter and square all four sides once I finish the bottom side the one gonna be away from the tailgate I'm going to cut 45 on both sides to make it look better and if somebody accidentally run their hand against it it won't hurt as bad I square this side and this side I mark this one over here with the file I put two line this will be the side where it will be welded to the tailgate I don't care about these sides because there is nothing uh, will be weld to them or anything however I'm going to uh, clean these surfaces with the mill uh, I don't care if they're going to be square to these or not I'm just going to clean them so they look the same. After that, I'm going to 45 this end over here.
I marked one side of these brackets with the file. I put one, two, three, and four. This way, when I install it on the tailgate, I make sure I will orient them the same way they are now. This way, the hole will be aligned perfectly. I have everything prepped and ready to go in. I'm going to build stabilizers for this rod. It's 5 8 of inch. However, because it's very long, it's a flimsy little bit. So I have to stabilize it in the middle. These are the pins I made yesterday. I have this shaft installed. I still need to build the lock mechanism over here. This part over here, it's two washers. This one will be welded on the shaft and this washer will act as a thrust bearing. This will prevent the shaft from going this way and the lock mechanism over here will prevent it from going this way. The shaft rotates smoothly. This one over here rotates smoothly too. After I welded the brackets and the bushings, I polished the area where the shaft going to spin with the sandpaper. I used this homemade contraption. It's just a quarter inch rod. And I slid the end of it over here with the bandsaw so I could hook this uh, sandpaper to it and then I could spin it with the drill. I will show you, I pull this uh, shaft out and I'll show you how smooth, almost mirror finish the surface of the bushing and the bracket on the other end. It's not lubricated, spin freely. I will not weld anything until I assemble everything. This way, if I need to adjust anything, you know, to the side or change the angle or whatever, then I could do that. And then I will tack this in place, this and everything else.
this is going to go like this I made sure those marking I put when I made those they on the same side so the hole to the side is lined up perfectly when I mount this like this they will be the exact dimension as far as from this side to the center of the pin And this is how it's supposed to go. I'm going to short this little bit. It doesn't need to be this long. I will see how much movement I have in the shaft and I short this just little bit. I may get a flat stock over here and use just one clamp to bring this up. I set both sides, I square this by going to the bed and check it this way, this way, this way down to it. And also I made sure both of these uh, flush or square or parallel to this one by putting the square this way and using this over here with both of these touching. If I raise it up, it's touch over here. So it is perfect right now. I'm going to weld these blocks and leave this free until I make uh, both of these 
just in case I need to tweak him in and out a little bit. If I put it flush over here, I have about 3 8 of inch clearance over here. And this should be plenty if uh, the truck is not level, the bed may try to twist or something to ensure this always stay free. It's not getting a bind. If I get it closer, it will look better. However, I don't want uh, any of these mechanical parts to get in a bind. I'm gonna cut the steel to the same length as the wood and then I'll tweak it a little bit. It looks like I just need to move this part over here about about maybe 15 degrees and this will clear the gate. I may not even need to move that. Yeah, maybe 10 degrees what I need to move this to be able uh, to lock and unlock the gate. So I'll leave this just in case there is some sand over here or anything. And the gate open a little bit. And then I could try to force the gate shut this way.
they are grinded and they're perfectly matched. I'm going to prime the back side and then I will tack them in place. I will hook this to this rod so this will not damage the bushing. If I hook the ground on the bed and I try to weld here, it may arc between the bushing and the shaft and this will mess it up. It will not be operating smoothly. This came out nice, it operates smoothly. I clean the welded area, I'm going to prime it. I still need to finish weld this over here. I'm planning to remove the gate once I add the chain to limit the opening of the gate. I'm also going to add another lock mechanism, not for this gate, but I'm planning in the future to reuse the old gate because it swing this way. So I could use this truck to load, you know, other type of stuff other than dirt or uh, rocks or sand. So I'm going to add something else over there, but uh, I will finish this uh, video when I finish this, uh, uh, this part over here. But in the future, I'm going to remove the gate and finish welding this part over here because I'm only welded here and I tacked it to the other side. I'll prime it for now so it doesn't rust. And uh, next weekend, I'm going to add the handle and I'm going to build the stabilizers for the long rod, the one that go to the front. And then I'll finish, adjust this and tack the activating arms. But for now, I'm very satisfied with this. Both sides, they're very smooth. Uh, doesn't have a play in and out maybe 20 thousands of inch you need that type of clearance for grease etc but everything come out good don't forget to give me one of these